Before I get started, if you all have never watched any of my videos from start to finish, I want you to make sure that you do that for this one. It's very important. What's up, brownies? I won't be before you long. I just wanted to make a quick video due to this pattern that I'm seeing in my videos in the comment section with all of this disrespect, especially if the topic has something to do with black men and women. You all make these stupid gender wars out of everything. Now, you won't cancel the people who actually say and do things that are damaging to the community as a whole. But it seems like if a regular person makes some sort of misstep or a comment that you don't like, you're ready to cancel them. See, we need to get rid of this red pill and pink pill and take that orange pill for balance because we need to be more focused about getting better representation for us as a whole and pushing the right type of voices and amplifying the right type of voices, pushing the right people to the front. Because we have bigger fish to fry. You take this situation with the Alabama mayor who won the election fair and square and is still being locked out, basically, because the colonizer said, I don't care what the election said, we still run things. So that's what we need to be focused on, granting each other grace so that we can work on collective uplift and unity. And so I'm just using um, the recent situation with Anthony O'Neill and the one with Pastor Mike Todd to kind of make the example of making a misstep, apologizing and moving on instead of canceling someone forever. And then also um, just a little extra encouragement on the end. I just want us to refocus. Let's get into it. How can we still be relevant and real and show some of our trauma without it uh, misrepresenting the kingdom to bring more people in? One word, remember. If you would just remember who you were, where you were, what you were doing when the grace of yeah. God found you. If you would just remember you getting on the Bible app and then getting on a pornography website. If you would just remember you taking your tithe money and spending it to go on a trip with your friends. If you would just, I mean, come on, let's think about it. If you would just remember all the times you said, God, if you get me out of this, I promise I'll never. And you went back the next weekend and did the same thing. It's like we have this amnesia, this like, like where we forget. And if we get a season of being away or maturing from something, then we crucify people who are in the season we was just in. Then I want to take them to Africa. You know what I'm saying? I want to take them to the motherland and let them see that, hey, we're blessed over here, you know? But look at them. They're staying in, in, in woods and in trees. Mm -hmm. You know, I want mm -hmm. them to experience that. And then I'm going to wow. go to California. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yo, I want to start off this video uh, in this. Uh, let me just say that front. I apologize. When I went back and I watched the show, I was even shocked that I said that. And sometimes as I'm on stages and as I am talking, I tend to say things and articulate it the wrong way. Um, and that statement did not represent my heart. I have to own that. Because one thing I do know for, for a fact is it's not about the intent. It's also about the impact. And those are two important factors when it comes to communication. And you guys, I apologize from the bottom of my heart for uh, that misstatement. That was a statement that should not have been said. Uh, that was a very immature, uneducated statement uh, to state about Africa. Um, uh, I am excited about going to Africa to learn more about uh, the motherland, to learn more about my heritage, to learn more about you know my people. And so I just want to come on here, apologize for that that statement. I did not mean my intent was not to hurt uh, anybody. And that was a dumb statement. I own that. You don't see it clearly yet, but you hit. <laughs> and this is where most people would not face Jesus anymore. What most people would do is turn away. <coughs> what I'm telling you. It's just as he's physically standing here, knowing what's coming. God's saying, can you physically and spiritually and emotionally be able to stand when getting the vision or receiving it might get nasty? You mean, God, I just bought in crazy faith. I just bought my dream car 
and now you're going to ask me to sell it back and ride in the hoopty again? Yeah, because the vision I'm about to give you, it might get nasty. And do you, do you hear and see the responses of the people? How you just reacted is how the people in your life will react. When God is doing what it takes for the miracle, what are you saying? This man was blind. And what he was trying to do with this man is give him his DNA. When Jesus uh, spit on that man, he was blind and then he could see. I watched it back and um, it was disgusting. <laughs> like that was gross. I wanna validate everybody's feelings um, that that was a distraction to what I was really trying to do. I was really trying to make the word come alive and for people to see the story. But yesterday it got too live and I own that. And um, I just wanna make sure people know that we wanna help people. We want people to see Jesus. We want people to feel loved. We want people who are desperate to be able to find hope. And I'm passionate about that so much so that I try to do extreme things to help people get it. And yesterday it crossed the line. So um, I love you guys. I appreciate everybody that's been praying for us and sending us messages. And to anybody who just saw that three minute clip, I really encourage you to go back and watch the whole message. There's some truth and some life in there that could potentially change your whole life. All right, and there you have it. You heard their mistakes and then you heard their apologies. And the reason I chose these two men is because I feel like in the grand scheme of things, whereas no one is perfect, they are much better representation for black men in this country than a lot of these entertainers, the blue face and the rappers, and um, a lot of these red pillars that are doing this uh, black women are undesirable and going to die alone commentary. We have to get away from this stuff. Now, as it pertains to Anthony O'Neill, I've already made a separate video defending him. But one thing that you all don't know and that I'm probably going to have to release before the end of this year is the video on how he literally helped me step back from the ledge when I was going through what I was going through this summer. If, if I had gone with my first mind, I literally wouldn't be alive to make this video. So that's why that he his situation was a bit touchy for me. Not only that, but also because once again, him saying living in trees literally does not make any sense. No one lives in a tree. So he misspoke there. But also as far as living in woods, I'd like to point out that every country on every continent has a more rural and underdeveloped area to it. So whereas he was speaking of Africa at that particular point, still the level of outrage and the lack of forgiveness that was given after the apology, so much so that yesterday he went live on IG and did another apology and explanation when this statement was actually made like three months ago and he already did the apology video over a week ago. Why is this still going on? What's with the threats and the, like, it's, it's absurd to me. And as far as Pastor Mike Todd, the only person that was actually affected by what he did was his brother. Why did the outrage last that long for him? It was weird. But watch AO's um, entire video with him um, because they really get in depth about how you need to cancel out some of the outside noise for your own mental health. And lastly, I want to end this video with um, Pastor Michael Todd speaking on the reason behind the dual covers for his book. It is powerful and you need to watch this to the end. And this should help you refocus on what's really important for our community right now. The front cover, the, the publisher wanted me smiling because that, you know, the triumph. But this the cover. This the cover. I said, well, we're doing a double cover because this is my dad, my four brothers, and my son in one picture. Okay? Wow. This man. is a three generations of Todd in one picture, but it looks like me. And I wanted everybody to understand as I'm looking at this, this is my eye, but this is my seven-year-old son's eye. And they look the same. And until we deal with our damage, 
We affect every person that is around us that we love. And so this picture right here, you could do this with everybody you love, but I just wanted to, to, to tell everybody this is why this book is important. God can take your trauma and he can turn it into triumph. Deliver me, crazy people, trolling people, lying people, self-righteous people, entitled people, oh, people, mm, people. But please forgive me when I'm one of those people.